So the sticker we're talking about today, week three, or third episode of the quarantine, is this DGK ice cream truck street candy sticker. Um, I don't know who it's by. I couldn't find out. I uh, messaged the DGK company. Uh, they haven't gotten back to me as of yet. It's a huge company. They have millions of followers on Instagram. The odds of them seeing my message, pretty slim. But I tried. I don't know if it's like an outside artist or someone that works at the company full time. But uh, if I find out, I'll tell you in a later episode if they tell me. Um, DGK is a company founded by Stevie Williams in 2009. Uh, DGK stands for Dirty Ghetto Kids. Great name, obviously. Um, right off the bat, I think the company was really popular. Like, it was one of those side companies, like independent companies. Stevie Williams was a very popular skater. Skated for chocolate, came out of Philly. That scene, kind of the love park scene. And he was really, really popular. And he started his own thing and it kind of blew up kind of almost instantly. I see the clothes all the time, uh, kids wearing them. The boards seem to be really, really popular. And it's a cool brand. They have cool design and good skaters and I'm a fan of it. This sticker, I cannot tell if it's digitally printed and then has just like a gloss over the top or it's color separated. If it's color separated, there's tons of colors in it because there is halftone dots used in it. I can't tell because you got purple, magenta, black, light blue, orange, yellow, white. Maybe, I mean, maybe it's screen printed green, but if it is, it's expensive. It was an expensive sticker to make. I think it cost me $2. It's a new sticker, so it's not, you know, hard to get or it wasn't when I got it. I got three of them, obviously, because why wouldn't you? Stevie Williams is interesting. I was reading about him, and he said something in an interview I really liked where he was talking about skate videos, and he was saying how skate videos nowadays tend to only show how hard skateboarding is, but not how fun it is. And I thought that was like a really good observation. Because when I watch, I mean, I'm old, but when I was younger and I watched skate videos, if the skateboarding was incredibly intimidating, I liked it as skateboarding. I was like, that's good skateboarding. But the idea of going out and trying to do those tricks was like health prohibitive. I wasn't going to go try to crooked grind a 15 stair rail, you know, at Hollywood High or whatever. Like I could, there, there was no version of that I could do. But when you watch maybe older videos, especially ones from the 80s, there's a lot of like messing around in them. Like you just get the, it's, it feels more like a bunch of skaters going out and running around and skating and just jumping off stuff and having fun, which makes you want to go skate and isn't like, well, I have to be the best pro ever to go skate this spot. And there's more of that now in skating. I think some companies have gotten the sense that that's a big part of what makes watching videos, you know, fun. This sticker, the art in it is obviously uh, referencing the art of airbrush, which I'm a huge fan of growing up in the 80s. Airbrush art was very, very popular. I've never used one. Uh, when I was young, I wanted one, but the, it was very expensive. If you know anything about airbrush art, you have to buy a compressor. There's all kinds of parts. It's like a machine. It's basically like a tiny, tiny spray can that sprays paint really slowly and precisely, and you can adjust the width and the, how much paint comes off so you can be hyper hyper precise and so the kind of art people have made with airbrush over the years is really perfected some of it not all of it some of it's like loose and fun but what i gravitated towards initially was that perfect 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 looking airbrush art like robots or sci-fi stuff or the way airbrush people were that because you can get this perfectly even surface and I've always been sort of fascinated by art that's trying to be absolutely perfect because it is a very like different mindset when you're making it because there's no, you're not like changing the painting or the drawing or whatever you're making while you're doing it. You have to like make this plan ahead of time, like a map and you have to lay it out perfectly 
and then execute it perfectly like a hyper realistic incredibly difficult paint by numbers and there's like taping and they use this this clear masking tape called frisket which is like a big sheet of tape that you could cut into to get your perfect lines all mapped out stenciled and spray over that and it's just a kind of art process i've never done so i've always found it really interesting some of the subject matter tends to be a little stale because i think when you plan on spending that much time making a painting it's hard to pick something that's maybe crazy and of the moment because you don't want to waste a thousand hours of your life painting something that's not going to be cool the next week which is sort of funny now when you look back at airbrush art because some of it looks incredibly corny but you see a lot of spheres <laughs> like dripping metal spheres and things like that lots of eyes lots of eyes lots of robots robot hands so they can make them look metallic and stuff i love airbrush art primarily because i love lowriders i love lowrider art if you want to know what i mean by lowriders i mean like those perfectly painted hyper colored candy colored vintage cars that bounce up and down with white wall tires and beautiful tiny spoked rims and i just they're just about the coolest thing to look at out there i've i've loved lowriders my whole life from the first time i saw one i love my think my favorite like model of car turned into a lowrider is obviously an impala or a buick regal like kind of a cheaper one or a 80s el camino lowered that with hydraulics and just a shocking paint job the reason i've always loved it is again it has to be perfect the amount of like effort in painting a car to look like that is insane it takes weeks it's incredibly expensive it has to be done like perfectly i'm pretty sure you only get one chance to do it right and it's super chemical which has always been intimidating I don't understand how any of that stuff works. And once they're done and they're done right, they're just so fun to look at. There's like a bunch of lowrider dudes that kind of show up to the Tommy Burgers every once in a while in Hollywood. Seems like they do it like once or twice a month. And so all like 20 or 30 perfect cars are there and you can just stare at them. It's the best. Lowrider art also has always been something I loved. When I was young and in high school, there's a magazine called Lowrider Art that I don't, I believe stopped printing recently. And one of the reasons I love it so much is it is incredibly sincere. The art you see in Lowrider Art and on Lowriders and just the kind of design of the car, the paint jobs of the cars is really, really, really sincere. There's nothing ironic about it. It's stuff that the artists making it and the people paying to have it made on their cars and stuff genuinely genuinely love and i think a lot of that has to do with it being rooted in like cultural references like a lot of the stuff in lowrider art magazine has to do with chicano culture and aztec culture and los angeles art culture and los angeles gang culture and street culture it's incredibly sincere because you don't see that as often as you as i would like in art. Like I really want to know the person making it means it like wholeheartedly, like they care about it deeply. I also picked this sticker as a means to just talk about Mr. Cartoon. There's a great documentary on Netflix right now called LA Originals. It's about Mr. Cartoon and Esteban Oriel who are Los Angeles legends uh, as far as doc creating like LA Chicano street art and documenting it. Esteban Oriel is a photographer. Uh, he's the one who took basically the most famous version of the L.A. finger uh, sign. And he's also been just documenting that stuff his, for 20 some odd years, maybe 25. And he's incredible. He's a total genius. And Mr. Cartoon is a total genius as well. Tattoo artist, artist, airbrusher, just in general does many things. Um, I found out about him initially. I was probably just from seeing stuff he did for clothing labels in the early 90s and the way he drew people 
I really, really liked like people with kind of clown faces, kind of the smile now, cry later faces on people. And the way he did lettering and cars was just like insane. He did an ice cream truck that they showed at the Art in the Street show. I believe the Art in the Street show, either the one at MoCA or the one downtown. I went to both of them. I, I get the names mixed up. But this ice cream truck is the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's fucking perfect, top to bottom. It's this airbrush masterpiece. Every inch of it has something cool on it. The rims, everything about it is flawless. And when you look at it up close, it's like the best sculpture you've ever seen. And you can drive it. It's so cool looking. If you have time, A, watch the documentary, but look up The Art of Mr. Cartoon. Buy whatever you can get your hands on. And like Estevan Oriol's books are great. You can see all the pictures of just documenting LA culture over the last few decades. And it's just the most fascinating, aesthetically looking stuff. And it's fascinating from just a culture of perspective of seeing how first generation, second generation, people have incorporated themselves and their art into LA culture. And you see artists referencing it and using it, like Richard Prince does it a lot. He's shown like car hoods with kind of candy painted things like on it's a It's a culture that's, I think, undervalued on an artistic level. Like heavy metal vans, just the van, you know, the, the, the van conversion with art on the side. That stuff is the best. Cause that person really truly loves that. Whatever art they picked and whatever van they picked, they are invested in that. That is their shit. And sometimes what you see in the like quote unquote fine art world can feel a little detached emotionally. But this stuff to me isn't. I don't know if this is someone's board or just it's for the company, DGK, but whatever art director, designer, artist made that, like they meant that. They mean this, they know how cool it is. And they're like, we're gonna make a sweet looking lowered ice cream truck. I think it's a smart thing to be inspired by a group of artists that are holistically sincere about what they're making. Like Mr. Cartoon, I remember back in the day, you know, I wanted a Mr. Cartoon tattoo, but I heard you had to mail an envelope with like five grand in it. And that just got you on the waiting list. And the waiting list was like a year long, <laughs> but his tattoos are like, literally some of the best tattoos you can see in the world like he he broke out and started a lot of things that now a lot of tattoo artists have have done and the same is like s von oriel too has, his style of photography has inspired tons and tons of photographers who documented street culture and just cultures in general like those guys are like truly important and original and this sticker i think is like to some degree a bit of an homage to both of them I love that it's a new sticker too. I didn't have to track it down on eBay. I just bought it from SoCal Skate Shop for two bucks. I got three of them or whatever. And I'm a huge fan of it. TGK is great. Uh, watch that documentary, Mr. Cartoon, Esteban Oriole. That is why this is one of my favorite stickers. Hope you guys are all right, man. Staying safe, staying inside still. Uh, I don't know if we're getting closer to anything. I hope. I've watched everything on every channel. Watched the movie Arrival seven times. So.